If you have an interest in horses and love learning more about horses, the horse industry, teaching, or even managing your own horse business, then you're in the right place. We would love you to join us on our mission, which is to improve the lives of horses around the world through the education of riders, handlers, and trainers. So get comfortable, listen in, and enjoy. Our guest today is Elizabeth Grinder Young. Elizabeth's a show jumping specialist and also a coach and a trainer. How are you today, Elizabeth? I'm very well, thank you, Glennis, and thank you for inviting me onto Horse Chat. <laughs> no worries at all. So, Elizabeth, you've had a bit of a tricky morning. You've been in the sheep yards and your voice might be a bit scratchy, is that right? It could be. We live on a sheep farm and, and we've been mustering and drafting about 3,000 sheep this morning, so okay. a bit of dust has been inhaled. Sure, sure. Okay, so Elizabeth, we start off with your favourite quote. What's your favourite quote, one that you can, you know, might have inspired you or influenced you with horses? Yeah, that reach for the moon and if you miss it, you will still land on a star. So I use that so much that a friend has actually given me a coffee mug with it on. <laughs> That's good. And do you use it for your students? I do. I use it for myself all mm. the way along and then if I think I need to, you know, inspire someone or, or give someone a bit more, I bring that out and use that for them. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. Now, tell me about, you know, because you're, you're off property now, Did you were you on property when you were young? How did you actually start with horses? Yes, I grew up in the Upper Murray on a family farm and my first memories are of mustering with my dad. He on his 16-hand big black horse, Clancy, and me on my little piebald Shetland mare, Calico. And I did that from about the age of four and then went to pony club from five. I think both those names are very good, Clancy and Calico. <laughs> they were both gorgeous horses. Mm-hmm. Now, a long way from mustering on Calico with your father, when did you actually decide to have a career with horses? How did that work out? Well, I went all the way through Pony Club, as I said, from about five. So I did everything that Pony Club offered. And we also did quite a few local shows. And my parents took me to royal shows from a fairly young age as well. So I think I always wanted a competitive career with horses. And then at about 16, I realised I actually needed to pay for it. So I decided to go to uni and study business. And then while I was at uni, I couldn't keep my horses fit enough to events, which I still did, and so show jumping seemed the way to go. Yep, yep, and you're not the only person that says that. I mean, it takes a fair bit to keep eventers fit, to keep them fit, especially if you're doing a few three days, you know. You've got to put in a lot of hours to get those miles in, to get the fitness going. Yes, when you're just riding on weekends, you know, there's not you can't do that. No, no. Now, if someone's going to talk to you about a career with horses, what sort of core skills or character traits do you think they need? What would you advise them? Well, I think first you have to like horses and I think mm-hmm. you have to have a clear goal of what your career looks like and plans are made to be changed, but you need good planning and management skills and I think you also need to be able to handle disappointment because the horse industry has a lot of ups and downs and... I don't know, surround yourself with the right people to help you achieve those goals. You're sort of going back for that reaching for the moon again, I think. (laughs) I'm always reaching for the moon. I think you sound like a bit of a goal setter, yeah. Yeah, yes, I am a goal setter. I I think I I, I need to have a goal, keep myself motivated. Good, good. Now, what's the best thing about working with horses? Oh, I think the fact that you take a horse and you can teach it to do these amazing things and also what they give back to you. So all my horses I sort of started or my family helped me start as young four-year-olds and the fact that you can take them from there to, you know, winning Grand Prix at Royal Shows and doing amazing things and that horse just gives you everything because it loves you and you've trained it. It's an amazing thing. I, I just love working with horses and what they give back to you. Mm, it's lovely to, yeah, to just look in their eyes and know that they're confident you being around them and, you know, and the trust that's there. Yes, and they'll do something because you ask them to mm. and they trust you to do that. For sure. What about people who've helped you along the way? My dad, well, both my parents, but my dad particularly was a very strong early influence and then I was nine, I was lucky enough to start lessons with Art Utendahl and that gave me a great start and I sort of did that right through my teenage years until he moved away. When I was doing my HSC, 
Des and Alan Gleeson, who are great horsemen, they helped and Des actually rode my thin young horse, D-Bar Red Baron, while I did my HSC and continued to help me a lot after that. Then when I decided to go full-time show jumping, I lived and travelled with the Faye family for most of my first year and continued to go back and travel with them for quite a lot after that. So John and Monica are both great horse people and I learned a lot from both of them, particularly not only in the competition side but keeping horses on the road. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, John and Shelley Kelly, when I started travelling on my own sort of after the Fay family period, they gave me a lot of support and help and I, I stayed with them a lot in Sydney when I did shows there. And um, Shelley's a great mentor and Shelley and I travelled together quite a lot as well. And probably the final one is, I'd say, Alexa Bell. When she came out and was the Australian coach, I found her very inspiring and, and learned a lot from her. But I've been lucky to have a lot of fantastic horse people mentor and help me along the way. Yes, yes. And what about horses? You know, because people can help you along the way, but horses can as well. Have you got a special horse or, or any horses that you'd like to mention? Besides Calico. <laughs> Calico, she, she was the legend. But I think the obvious choice is OT Flying High, who I called Fred, mm-hmm. and he was absolutely amazing. We bought him as a broken-in four-year-old, and together we had a you know fantastic time. He won Grand Prix or Part 1s at all the royals that I went to, which were Adelaide, Melbourne, Canberra, Sydney and Brisbane, and he kept me very high in the World Cup rankings were qualifier rankings for about 10 years and he took me to the World Cup final in um, Gothenburg in Sweden in 1995. So he was just amazing. Mm. But another very special horse was D-Bar Red Baron because he was the one that actually showed me I could mix it and compete at that level. And we had a very special, um, people think about their wins, but we actually came second at the Melbourne Grand Prix one year in the early 90s. And that was my first taste of that I could actually place and, you know, go well at that level. So that was, he was a very special horse as well. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. And is that your proudest moment, do you think, or, or at the World Cup final? Yeah, I think, you know, I've, I have quite a few proud moments, but yeah, the World Cup final was just the most amazing thing I've ever done and it was, you know, the thing I was aiming for for quite a long time. So to get there and achieve that, it was a very proud moment and it's it's a lovely thing to represent your country as well. Mm, mm. That's, that's a great thing to do. Thinking about, you know, because it's great to have those proud moments, what about your biggest challenge? What sort of something that might have been a little bit of a hiccup along the way or a complete roadblock? Because I want to to talk about (laughs) how you overcame it, um, not just what the challenge was. Well, I think for me, the logistics of keeping myself and my horses and a truck on the road and competition fit, and then I, to do that, I worked all through my, through most of my competition period and also used to come home and work on the family farm So juggling all that could sometimes be quite difficult. And I found I just had to be, I had, I used to say plans are made to be changed, but I had to have a plan, I had to have a budget and I had to have a goal. Mm -hmm. And that was probably, you know, and those things where you all set, you think you're going to do well and your horse hurts yourself or you have the last rail down or, you know, things like that. And it mucks up all those plans and budgets. Yep. Yep. So that was probably the biggest challenge for me. And do you think that helps you get through it, though? You know, going back again to the goal setting, the goal setting and the planning helped you get through it all and all the logistics so that you could juggle it all? I think so. I I think, you know, I I had very clear ideas of what I wanted to do and I think keeping my eye on that because, of course, you get disappointments, but you've just got to pick yourself up, realign those plans and goals and, yes, and keep going. Mm, mm. Thinking now about coaching, what's a common fault that you see with riders and how can they fix them? I've just been, spent a week at a pony club camp mm. and I think probably balance, if you're teaching riders that aren't, you know, when they come, when you get a troop of 10 coming to a pony club lesson, yep. they're not all go jumpers and, you know, balance over the fence is a big thing. Mm-hmm. So I think my quote for the week has been, you know, heels down, eyes up. And if you do both of those things, that remedies a whole lot of balance issues. So 
So that's probably a, a big thing to, you know, keep your eyes up um, mm-hmm. and then keep your heels down and, and that will give you a lot more balance on your horse. And it's amazing how the eyes, you know, the eyes coming down, the head going forward and, you know, the head might weigh about 10% of your body weight and that changes a lot for the horse. So as soon as you do have your eyes up and the head back, a horse that may have been stopping um, might all of a sudden start to jump and be a bit more confident if the rider is better balanced. Yes, yeah, so well, that's the other thing I found, that, you know, the riders that look at the fence, the horse wonders what's wrong with it. Mm. and the rider that looks over beyond the fence, the horse yes. says, well, you want me to go there? So, of mm. course, I will. Mm. And, um, you know, I find the biomechanic of riding amazing. You just need to make a few little position changes, and it makes a huge difference to the result yep. and the outcome. Did you get your interest in biomechanics from Shelley Kelly or Michelle Kelly? I'm just wondering because that's what she's specialising in now, yeah. Yes, and, and Shelley and I did a lot, and, and maybe we workshopped that, you know, mm. Subconsciously, I'm not really aware of that. I'm much more aware of the biomechanics, I think, from than I was when I was riding, you know, mm-hmm. through watching people and, and being able to see it. Mm-hmm. But certainly it's something that we discuss. Um, but I, I, I just think, you know, being on the ground, watching it and, and seeing those little tweaks that you make in the position and the huge result it change it has in the outcome yes. is probably what's led me to that. Oh, hang on a sec. Let me interrupt to let people know about the horse industry qualifications at onlinehorsecollege.com. If you have a look at the flexible options, there's online theory and the practical components can be completed by video or with a qualified expert in your area. That website again is onlinehorsecollege.com. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. For those people that are interested in that interview, it's horsechats.com slash Michelle Kelly or just dash or just uh, search for Michelle. Yeah, so that that's interesting. You know, sometimes people do come together and get a very common thread within the riding. Now, what about something else to help the listeners? Have you got a book or something that can help complement their riding? Well, a book that I've used and, and I also think is really useful if you're just starting off is Linda Allen's 101 Jumping Exercises for Horses and People, Mm -hmm. or Horses and Rider, actually. I'm looking at it now. And um, it not only has the exercises, but it has good instructions that go along with it. So I think that's a great book. What's your favourite one out of that? Oh, that's really tricky. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I I love circles. So there's a couple of circle exercises in there that I really like because I think that just shows up. You know, if you can't do a half circle, you can't ride a course. Yes. So doing circle exercises are fantastic and they show up a whole lot of issues that can be worked on and, and can help in the riding of a course. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and of course, circles ridden on the right rein have got to be ridden on the left rein and vice versa, and they should be the same. Absolutely. Mm. And that's very tricky to achieve sometimes. Yes, yes. Elizabeth, what are you looking forward to at the moment? Have you got any young horses? You haven't, have you, because you're not riding so much. But have you got young riders that you'd like to see go on and do things? Look, I have some great young riders at the moment, and I enjoy all my teaching, but probably. I would say everyone has a niche and I love ambitious teaching ambitious teenagers. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I have a, a couple of riders that I'd love to continue to nurture and, and bring through, you know, up into junior and young rider ranks. And my own children are also riding, so I'm enjoying bringing them through as well. Okay. And I'm thinking those ambitious teenagers, I'm sure you've got goals set for them and, um, you know, hopefully they'll follow those and follow the planning. So they're probably in the best hands there you know, to keep them going and keep them on the right track. That's great. And I think the thing about goals is they need to be your goals. You know, yes. For me, I can say to them they need to think about what they need to do, but I can't say I think you should do this. They need to be their goals and then I help them achieve mm. their goals. Yes, so all you are is a guiding influence. Yes, yep. <laughs> an yep. instrument. <laughs> All right. Now, Elizabeth, just in a few sentences, can you sum up your philosophy with horses? A philosophy I've always used in my career with horses is never give up, stay focused, stay positive and stay strong. You know, it's easy to say that, but I think, you know, when you do fall over, then you have to pick yourself up and keep going. Yep. And, you know, maybe look at that again and think, right, how do I do that? Yes. 
Yes. But, you know, I think that always have your eye on where you're looking to. Yep. And when those little dips and, um, you know, things happen, which inevitably they do, yep. um, that you just dust yourself off, you know, pick yourself up, dust yourself off and keep going. Yeah, I think that was very well said. And, you know, your pleasure said before plans change. Yes, they, they definitely do, but yes. they need to be there. Yes. And how can people contact you? My mobile is 0418 670143 and my email is elizgrenda, which is E-L-I-Z-G-R-E-N-D-A at hotmail.com. That's great. And those details will be on horsechats.com slash Elizabeth Grenda Young or else just search for Elizabeth on horsechats.com. Thanks very much, Elizabeth, for your time. I've enjoyed talking to you. I've enjoyed talking to you about your career and your juggling and your show jumping, you know, juggling your job and your family farm and your riding. And, um, you know, you certainly rode and planned it all out and did quite well with what I think is goal setting and planning was being instrumental in your success. So um, I think that's good and it's a good lesson for anyone else who's planning to achieve things, you know, get your goals in place, get your budget in place, get your plans in place and, uh, yeah, just go for it. Absolutely, and it's been a pleasure talking to you, Glennis. Thank you very much. Pleasure talking to you too, Elizabeth. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh, wait, before you go, if you're an equestrian coach or a horse riding instructor or even if you aspire to be one, Have a look at the free video series for horse riding instructors on the Horse Chats website. Go there now. Have a look. Horsechats.com Remember that our comments and instructions are general in nature and do not take into consideration your individual horses or your individual ability and circumstances. If you enjoyed this podcast, then please leave your comment below.